Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to look at organic chemistry, and in particular we're going to look at CFCs, that's chlorofluorocarbons, and the depletion of ozone. So by the end of this session you should be able to explain how chlorine atoms are formed and how they catalyse the decomposition of ozone. First up, let's have a look at chlorofluorocarbons. Called CFCs because of the chlorine, the fluorine and the carbon. CFC for short. We've got a couple of examples. We've got here one with one carbon, so this is based on methane. We've got three chlorines. So we try chloro, fluoro, because we've got one chlorine, methane. And over on the right here, we've got three fluorines and one chlorine, so we're now chloro tri fluoro methane. And the thing about CFCs is they're very stable and unreactive, and therefore they're able to drift up through the atmosphere and they make it all the way to the top of the atmosphere without reacting with any of the molecules on its way and therefore they can then react with UV light to make chlorine radicals as we shall see in just a moment. They were used originally for things like refrigerants and also for air sprays and in some packaging and these days because of the problems they have caused they're now banned substances and we have found replacement refrigerants and aerosol sprays that contain substances which aren't as dangerous to the ozone type layer. So let's just see what we mean by ozone depletion. Ozone, if you've not met it before, is a molecule made up from oxygen and instead of two oxygens it's actually made from three it tends to be in a ring structure like this and it's quite a reactive substance it's important in the upper atmosphere because it reacts with UV light and that reaction removes the UV light and therefore it can no longer get down to earth and then UV light is the thing that causes skin cancers and it is dangerous to general life on earth. So why is the CFCs a problem? Well, well what happens in the upper atmosphere is the CFCs can get up there and they're broken down by UV light to form two radicals. The carbon-based radical on the left and importantly this chlorine Based radical on the right hand side. The chlorine radical then can react here with ozone and that's as we've seen before a type of propagation forming once again an oxygen molecule and another radical. So we see another example of a propagation step and this chlorine oxide radical, ClO dot, is still reactive and will react with another ozone molecule. And this again forming oxygen, the fact it makes two of them, plus the chlorine radical again. What that means is that if we look, the chlorine is regenerated at the end, having been used in the middle. Here's an intermediate, the ClO dot, and overall our reaction is two ozones going to make three oxygens, removing the ozone, and the chlorine is acting here as a catalyst. So we don't need very much of the chlorine radical 
to destroy a lot of the ozone. Therefore, what we find is that they've now been banned so that these CFCs don't catalyze more of this ozone depletion. So just to recap then, we've been looking at CFCs and the depletion of ozone. You should now be able to use equations to explain how chlorine atoms are formed and how they catalyze the decomposition of ozone and also about fluorofluorocarbons. See you next time.